Hey guys, my name is Peter and today I'm going to share with you the gear that I use as a low budget filmmaker. The good news for you is that my opinion is totally unbiased. I do not have any sponsorships or anyone paying me to say this. The bad news for me is that I'm not popular enough to be paid or sponsored. I'm going to go over everything that I bought, give you my review, and then at the end, I'll give you the grand total of how much I've spent. I have always had an interest in filmmaking, but it wasn't until about six months ago that I really started to push my YouTube channel, and I've been slowly adding pieces of equipment. I've kind of used equipment over time as like uh, a reward, um, a motivation. Like if I can prove to myself that I'm a serious filmmaker, in the next three months, I'll add something else. So if you've seen the videos on my YouTube channel, you know that I do a lot of hiking, outdoorsy type adventure videos. So the equipment that I buy is geared toward that type of filmmaking. I've been kind of going this alone, you know? Nobody's here to show me how to do this. So I'm curious to hear what all of you think about the stuff that I've purchased. And also if there's any other piece of equipment that you think would really benefit me, I love getting comments. So let me know what you think. I respond to every one of them. So for me, it all started back in like the spring of 2020 when I bought my first drone. As a nature lover, you know, being able to take this drone and capture the beautiful outdoors, the footage that I was getting was like, wow, I can't believe I'm actually able to do something like this. So that's, that's kind of how it all got started. So this drone is the DJI Mavic Mini. It's the first generation. Now you can only get the second generation, which is a really good drone. But I bought this one with the whole combination with the extra batteries and I also bought the insurance. So the total price for this came to $538. So not cheap, but it's a really good starter drone because it's 249 grams. And if your drone weighs under 250 grams, you don't have to have it registered with the FAA. It takes great videos. It's fairly easy to operate. Starting off with a drone like this was really smart. I've crashed it three times. I've had to replace it twice. And it's given me a chance to learn how to operate the drone, to learn how to store all those video files that you make, and also to get a better understanding of where you can and cannot fly a drone. But as time progressed, I was looking at other people's videos and started to realize, oh, how do you do that hyperlapse? How do you follow your subject? How do you do that great slow motion? And, and I want higher resolution. I went from the Mavic Mini to the Mavic Air 2S. So the Mavic Air 2S uh, with the fly more combination with the case and the batteries and also the insurance, did come to $1,600. I was gonna go home and visit my family for Christmas and Spirit Airlines canceled my ticket. So I got all that money back. And then for Christmas, I decided I would get myself this drone. It shoots in 5.4K. It can follow subjects. It can do slow motion. It can do hyperlapse. Um, so it just really shoots a much better video. So it was really expensive, but um, I've been using it a lot since then. I love the drone. The videos that it takes, the pictures that it takes really are that much better for me. Someone who really, really relies a lot on my drone for my videos. To make sure the drone stays safe and to be able to launch it from the ground, I, I got myself this drone helipad that I can put on any surface and launch it from the ground rather than launch it from my hand. Uh, maybe you can see those cuts right there. That's me trying to launch my drone from my hand and the propeller's cutting me. And I carry it with me when I go hiking so that I can launch my drone from any, any type of surface. So in addition to the drone, the only other thing I actually record with is my cell phone, which is the iPhone XR. So it's a great video camera for a phone. I think we all know that. But if you're using your iPhone and you're hiking and you're moving around like I am, the, the footage will look really shaky, unless you have something called a gimbal. I did some research and went with DJI's OM5 gimbal, which is right here. Um, it comes like this. You put your phone inside this clip, the clip pops on there, and you can actually extend it as a selfie stick. Then, as you walk, the phone will be recording, and instead of shaking all the time, the gimbal smooths out the footage, so it's a lot easier on the viewer's eyes. The gimbal comes with this software that I never actually use. I have noticed that sometimes it seems to have a mind of its own. I want it to go left, it goes right, I want it to look down, it's not working, but it's still good enough to bring with me on all my trips. And it's nice to have at those sites where you're not allowed to use drones, like national parks, 
and you still want to get nice, interesting footage. Well, the next thing I bought is very cheap. It was 30 bucks. It's a tripod. So I bought this one because you can clip in your, your phone and these are malleable. So you could sort of like wrap them around tree branches. Um, it's great for, again, for national parks where you can't use your drone. You can sort of set up the tripod and watch yourself walk by, or you could set it up and record the sun setting in a hyperlapse. Um, I definitely do bring it with me on my hikes, but I probably use it less, way less often than my drone and even less often than the gimbal. But I still do think it's nice to have one and maybe one day I'd want one that's even taller. So the next piece of hardware was a big purchase. Uh, I recently bought the new Apple iMac with uh, the M1 chip. I had a seven year old iMac and it was really slow and editing videos is already a tedious process, but to do it on that computer, it was like three to five second lag anytime I made a click. And then if I needed to restart an application, it was like 20 minutes. <laughs> so I ended up getting a refurbished Apple iMac. It's the brand new model, but it was just returned by someone. They give it a new inspection and then they sell it to you for like 300 bucks less, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it has the same warranty as a new one. So I figured if anything goes wrong, I'll just send it back. So I went with it and so far I've had it for probably six weeks and have not had a problem. Editing a video was so slow in the past and with the new computer, it's lightning fast. I felt like I had to upgrade my computer. Another thing I upgraded was my audio. For um, On a lot of my videos, I was recording my voice using voice memos on my phone, and then I would airdrop the voice memos to my computer and then put them in Final Cut Pro. And then I was reading and watching some YouTube videos that said a clear audio is almost more important than clear video. Since I do voiceovers sitting at my desk, I invested in the Samsung Q2U uh, for $77. It was recommended by YouTube videos, and so far, I, I really like it. At first, I didn't realize that I had to go into my settings and indicate in my input audio that I wanted it to change to this microphone, so I didn't think it was worth it, and I almost returned it. But um, then I figured it out, and for my last video, you could definitely hear the difference in the audio. Hey guys, my name is Peter, and I'm a nature lover, and recently moved to sunny Los Angeles seeking adventure. My friend Jacqueline and I crave adventure and we got our fix on this trip. This is one of the most beautiful places I've ever been, and planning a successful trip is key. Very recently, I decided I would also like to record some videos in my home, um, like this one about the gear. So I ended up buying a ring light. I'm using it right now, but it's this UB size ring light. It was 25 bucks, comes with a tripod, the ring light, and then it holds your phone in the middle. And um, so far, I'm pretty happy with it. Lastly, I probably also spent about $100 on SD cards, um, chargers, adapters, replacement joysticks for my controller once on my drone because I lost one. So just $100 in other random stuff. So the grand total for all this hardware I bought has been $4,360. I felt like I had to get a new computer and the drone was really important to me. So those are the bulk of the costs, but um, didn't know how to upgrade my videos without doing it for much less. The possible other hardware I'm looking at is a GoPro for some underwater shots. Maybe they're good for action shots. The 360 degree camera is cool. And eventually maybe a really good camera with a really good lens. You know, the iPhone doesn't do a very good job of zooming in. It gets blurry or lower resolution. It doesn't do a super great job with slow-mo. It, it also gets grainy. So, you know, one day if I prove that I am really into filmmaking, maybe I will invest in a better camera and a lens. So I started editing my videos with iMovie, which is really great. You can do a lot of the same stuff I'm doing with just iMovie. After a while, I decided it was worth it for me to upgrade to Final Cut Pro for $300. It's a one-time purchase and then you have it forever, I think. So then you can do color grading and better transitions and cool titles and all sorts of extra fonts and features that I thought for 300 bucks lifetime fee that it was worth it was worth paying for. Another piece of software I use is Apple iCloud. So when I started filming drone videos, my phone kept filling up with storage. I kept having to delete old stuff and didn't matter even if I deleted it, it was still full. So I eventually paid for iCloud. Uh, I have 200 gigabytes of iCloud, which only costs me $3 a month. I mean, I feel like it's an absolute must as a filmmaker. These video files are huge and you're constantly gonna be trying to empty your phone out. 
So for the three bucks a month, it's a no-brainer. And probably once I hit that max, I'm gonna upgrade to the even higher amount. So if you're like me, having good music on your video is extremely important. And it's a very frustrating experience to find out that none of the music that you have and love, you can put on a YouTube video without you getting in trouble. I was trying to figure out how this works uh, without paying for it. I, I used the YouTube library of free music, but oh, it was just bad song after bad song after bad song. I invested in the first thing that I saw. It's called Epidemic Sound. They have a huge archive of music and sound effects. Um, and it's $15 a month. And honestly, it's worth it for me to be able to go in there and find music I like. Like it takes a while. I have to really browse through stuff, listen to 10 to 20 songs before I find one I actually like. But eventually I find one I like, and then I can put it on my video and you know feel good about the music I have. I would be very curious to hear if any of you have found a better way to access royalty-free music. Uh, please let me know in the comments if you have. For other software, I'm also considering Adobe Lightroom, which it's free on your phone, but it's not on your desktop, and I'd be using it on my desktop, or maybe Canva Pro. If you're a YouTuber, you know how important the thumbnail is. So being able to do those extra things you can do to make a really cool thumbnail, I think are important. I'm also considering maybe a subscription to a website that has all kinds of video stock footage I could use. You know, it, maybe it takes a little bit of pressure off me as a filmmaker to not have to film everything like a sunset or a sunrise. So I've spent $4,360 on hardware and $516 on software for a grand total of $4,876. So almost $5,000. Now that I hear that number, I'm wondering if I'm a low budget filmmaker or maybe a mid budget filmmaker. But in order to make the videos that I make, I don't know if I could have done it much cheaper. So I'm really curious. Let me know what you think of what I have. Is there something that maybe you have that's better, or is there something I don't have yet that I gotta have if I wanna make really great videos? Like I said, I read and respond to every single comment, so let me know. Thanks for listening.